Well, I'm delighted today to be joined by Professor Geoffrey Crisp, who is the Deputy Vice-Chancellor Academic and Vice President at the University of Canberra. Um, Geoffrey, as you, some of you may know, is also a Herzer Fellow, and he's a Principal Fellow of the ATA. And I suppose most relevant to this, that uh, Jeff uh, also ran the ALTC National Fellowship Project, uh, Transforming Assessment. And uh, uh, we've all enjoyed uh, that ongoing work that Jeff's involved in with Matthew Hillier there in the Transforming Assessment website. But particularly now, Jeff, uh, I want us to think about technology and how we can harness technology for good. And if you could riff on that for a sec. Yeah, thanks, Michael. And uh, thanks very much for your time today as well. And it's great to have a bit of a chat about um, assessment and technology and how we might actually use it for good. I like that uh, phrasing about using it for good. Um, and it's really about making sure that uh, we use all the affordances of technology, but actually not get bogged down by the technology itself. Technology is actually a tool that we use to achieve something. And that achieve something is the achieving something good in the assessment area. And I must say the, the key thing around using technology for assessment is actually not to think about the technology at all. What it really is, it's actually about good design of assessment tasks. So this is set something which is actually meaningful uh, for students to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll probably go through a few details on that as we go through this conversation. But really, that's the key to me. So it's about actually using the technology in a way which allows us to do things that we can't do in other ways. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where I see it's actually uh, where we can actually use it for good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So what would, you be, what would be some of the newer forms of assessment that you've seen emerge uh, that are particularly relevant to the online space? Look, I think the main thing uh, that we can look at is the idea of um, interactive assessment or assessment that has meaning beyond just a mark or a grade or progression or something like that. So the idea of using technology to give students access to tools that they can actually use in an assessment task. Mm -hmm. So by that, I mean getting students to do something which is interactive. Um, and that actually means changing the assessment task itself. So what I'm, I'm not talking about using a tool that basically just says, um, well, you can do a calculation or you can click on a, you know, a hotspot or something like that. What I'm talking about is giving them a much more sophisticated tool that actually allows students to interrogate, to integrate, to actually do something quite deep and meaningful with the tool, or it could be a combination of tools. There could be a number of tools uh, mm. that they use. But one of the things that uh, we worked on a little bit early on, uh, you mentioned Matthew and my colleague Matthew and the work we did in transforming assessment. One of the things we worked on there was actually the design of the assessment task, where a student would actually be able to use a digital tool or a series of digital tools to be able to generate their response. Now, by that, I don't mean a response where it's a website or a, um, a drawing or something like that. What I mean is it's, it's the intellectual um, exercise. So mm -hmm. the tool was used more as a, um, uh, like, a uh, like an experiment or it's like the what if. What would happen if I did this? What would happen if I did that? And the tool allowed the student to actually explore that. And so their response was actually an interpretation of the journey that they went through in using the tool mm -hmm. to come to some sort of conclusion. Now, that's the sort of thing which I think actually allows us to do deep and meaningful um, assessment mm -hmm. because the tool itself is not generating the answer. The tool is actually generating a thought process for the students to go through. And, that, and to me, that's actually a much more sophisticated use of technology. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not the end product itself. It's actually part of the journey that okay. students are on when they're doing an assessment task. So, what so I know you... the next thing you're going to ask me is, give me an example of that. <laughs> I don't know is that right? Yeah, well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so look, uh, just, just a couple of examples. Uh, so my original discipline area was chemistry, right? So one of the things that we looked at is uh, one of the key things in chemistry is what we call structure activity relationships. That is, how do, I, how, do I, how do I relate a structure of a molecule to some sort of uh, biological property or physical property or something like that, right? 
So rather than getting students to memorize for this structure, this is its physical property or its, um, uh, you, um, its biological property, you could say to the students, design me a molecule that has the following characteristics. And what you do is you give the students the, the tool to actually do the experiment themselves. Yeah, yeah. And that's actually the assessment task. Yeah, yeah. So it's actually changing the type of task we get students to do to move from the memory type thing to, uh, to, to the exploratory mm -hmm. type of approach. Now, that was an example from chemistry. But other things we looked at were things like if you're, say, a landscape architect, what if we could put you in the middle of, say, a garden and it was a three-dimensional garden and you could move around inside that garden and you could actually see the different objects that were in the garden. And then the questions would relate to things like, well, what's the relationship between the different objects, both man-made and natural, that are in the garden? Mm -hmm. So to do that, you'd have to be able to walk around the garden. You have to be able to see all of the structures. You have to be able to see them in three dimensions and you have to be able to see the relationship of one to another. Yeah, yeah. So that's the sort of thing where you can use technology quite nicely, um, you know, to explore an environment. Um, but the key to it is, from the academic point of view, is you have to think of a different type of task. Mm -hmm. Think of a different type of question that doesn't rely on straight memory or recall or um, allows students to explore. And why is that important? Because you can actually give a different version of the task to every student. Mm -hmm. So not every student has to have the same version. Yeah, so I'm assuming, I'm not, I know there are, but I'm assuming that there are resources around this on the Transforming Assessment website. Um, but yes, we've, we've got some examples up there for people that look at, because I know people need to see it in their own discipline, yeah, that's so right. what these things can look like. Yeah. Uh, but to me, the key for us is actually to, th to, to redesign the task. Yeah. So it actually becomes much more meaningful. Yeah, and, yeah. and Michael, look, one of the other things I think is really important, and I'm quite passionate about this. Um, when was the last time that you heard a student say to you, I was really inspired by that assessment task? Yes, that's I it. mean, the word inspiration and assessment don't normally go together. <laughs> um, and I think that's where we need to be. We yeah, need yeah. to actually set inspirational assessment tasks for our students. Yes, yes. One of, one of my pet things is that students can actually be productive not just fulfilling tasks. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Indeed. Anyway, so but now just switching the focus a little bit here, we hear a lot about cheating in the on, in online assessment. And, um, and what would be some of the key design lessons you would think would you know could minimise this this level of cheating that we experience? So one of the things I just described there about giving students a tool to be able to interrogate an idea or or a mm. concept, um, I, I think that helps in terms of the cheating right? Mm. Um, because it's actually quite difficult to cheat if you actually don't understand the concept in the first place. And then you can't actually use the tools to actually help you to be able to generate the response that you yeah. do. Now, mind you, you can pay someone else to do it. And we've seen that with the contract cheating. Um, but the, the other key thing, I think, is actually to involve students in the design of the task in the first right. place. And I think that's actually one of the keys. Um, because when I've talked to students about assessment, they very much see it as a, a transactional relationship that they have with the academic or the course or whatever. Mm -hmm. They see it as something that's done to them. Like, you know, I've been told I have to do this task. I had no say in what the task was. I had no say in the format. I had no say in what the response should look like. Basically, you told me what I have to do. Um, so I just have to go away. And, and what I do is I'll give you what you want, mm -hmm. basically. Right. Yeah. But if you actually sat students down and this is I've seen examples of this at a number of universities and it has different names. But the one that I know it as is negotiated assessment. And that's where what you do is you put students into groups and you say to them, here are the learning outcomes. Here's the rubric um, that you have to use. Now, design a task <laughs> in your group that actually shows me that you can meet the learning outcomes and yep. you can match the rubric that we've got here. And it's called negotiated assessment because the, the group of students has to, act, has, has to negotiate with yeah. the academic about their task. Cool. And so if they pick a trivial task or if they pick something that doesn't match the learning outcomes, then the academic can say, nope, not good enough. Got to go away and do it again. <laughs> cool. Okay. So we, are, of course, are now entering this uh, new world, not so new, but this new world of micro-credentialing and, you know, 
notion where we just can't have all these micro credentials being assessed by quizzes and things like that. I mean, how do you think this is going to play out in terms of things like micro credentials? That's a really good question. And it is actually one of my concerns. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually very much in favour of micro credentials um, and, and actually rethinking how we actually deliver, um, obviously, our, our, whether it's an award or a non-award um, unit or course. Um, however, I am concerned that a micro-credential will actually divide up the assessment into individual little components uh, that are quite atomistic. Mm -hmm. And I think that won't inspire students, and I don't think it'll um, encourage students to think about the broader context and the broader um, you know, the, the connection between mm -hmm. the different things that they're doing. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to be very careful with that. I mean, it, it, it's not... I don't think it's a problem that's uh, insurmountable. But I do think we have to build it in to the progression. If we're going to use micro-credentials towards an award, then we have to have components in there that actually allow students to put together um, their knowledge into a bigger task. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and I think we do have to do that. Otherwise, we will get to this point where it's actually just uh, individual skill development and students will just be showing they can do the skills, but not necessarily the deep thinking. That's yeah. associated with that. Yeah, yeah, very true, very true. Um, any last inspirational thoughts for us, mate? Look, I really encourage uh, all of our uh, staff to do two things. One is involve students in the assessment. I think that's really key. Um, don't be afraid to talk to the students about the assessment. Don't be afraid to change things. Um, you know, if feedback, if, if the students are giving you good feedback about how the assessment could be done differently or in a better way. It's not about losing control, um, because obviously the academics still have control over that, but it's actually about treating students as a partner in the assessment process. And the other thing I think is use your imagination. There is no reason why assessment should be boring. <laughs> it should be interesting. It should be inspirational. So That's basically, uh, my advice is go for it. Think of something interesting to do. Fantastic. Look, Jeff, thanks so much for sharing some insights with us that you've gained over the years. It's uh, a delight to see you and to uh, hope we can catch up again physically one day. It would be good. But uh, look forward to uh, 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 your work, seeing how this work evolves down at uh, UC and uh, also through the Transforming website uh, as well. So Transforming Assessment website. So thanks so much for joining us. Oh, thank you very much, Michael, as well.